Hello guys and welcome to another Blender tutorial. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make rock, particularly river bedrock, procedurally in Blender 2.93 alpha. And this rock is one I've actually seen quite a bit doing a lot of like river tours and going down south in parts of Australia. We see this sort of rock a lot on the side of rivers. It's very reddish. But um, I'm going to try and show you step by step how to really simply make it in Blender. We're going to be using some actual physical displacement, but you don't need any plugins. Just a fresh copy of Blender 2.93 is all you need to make this. We're going to make the little scene from scratch, and I'll take you through all of the node steps. It's pretty simple as you can see here, so I would call this beginner friendly, and hopefully it's something you guys can use and enjoy. So um, let's get into the tutorial. I've got Blender 2.93 opened up here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the default cube here and I'm just gonna hit Control Free or Command Free and that'll just add a subdivision level of free. You can also just go to your modifiers and just add a subdivision surface modifier that way. So um, I'm just gonna in fact bump that up maybe a few more levels in the viewport and then a few more in the render. So we have this nice smooth um, sphere thing happening here. So what we're gonna do now as well is we're gonna go Shift A in fact, let's get rid of the other camera and the light now scene. Um, just go into your front orthographic view and then go Shift A and add in a camera. And you're gonna go G, Y and move it forward in the scene. And then if you hit zero with the camera active, you'll go into your camera view. So just move the camera back a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go to my dimensions here under the camera settings and I'm gonna make it uh, 1080p at the top. And that's gonna give me a nice square aspect ratio. So just something like that should be perfect. And then what we're gonna do is so we're gonna go over to our render settings and we're not gonna be working with EV this time. So we're gonna click here and we're gonna change it to cycles. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and enable my GPU. If you don't have a GPU, you can just leave it at CPU, that'll be fine. So what we can do now is we can add in some lights so we can actually see our render. So we're gonna go Shift A. And let's go over to our light options and add in a simple area light. We're gonna go G, Z, move that area light above our sphere here. And we're gonna take the strength of this area light here. So go to our light settings, we're gonna make the power 130. So for a scene of this scale here, something like that should be enough. And we're gonna take our size here, we'll scale it up just a bit like that. And then we're gonna go into a camera view and we're gonna hit Z and we're gonna go render it and we're gonna see what that looks like. Okay, so that's the right amount of lighting. So what we can do now in our camera view, with that light active, we're gonna go Shift D, duplicate it, move it to the side, R to rotate it, and we're gonna select it again, Shift D, bring it down. In fact, just go to your side view if it helps, rotate it up and move it forward a bit. We're just trying to get like these four lights coming around this um, object here. Duplicate it one more time, bring it in here, coming up from the side, and then maybe I'll just duplicate the one on the side here just one more time, Shift D, move it forward and then rotate it in a little bit. So we should have something that looks like this, okay? I know it looks really white at the moment because we haven't added any materials to it, it's just rendering white, so it looks really intense. So we're gonna go over to our render settings quickly and I'm just gonna go down to the film over here and I'm just gonna make it transparent down here. I just like the working like that a little bit more. So let's now select the actual sphere here and we've got a light set up, we've got our render engine set up. So now we're gonna go over into our shading workspace. Make sure to go back into your camera view, hit Z and make sure we're in rendered. And now by default, we should have it because we subdivided the cube, the default cubes com comes with a default material. If it's not, you can just click on a plus, add a material, but by default, it should be a principled node that's being plugged into a material output. So I'm gonna call this river rock and just so I know what I'm working with here. And what's gonna be generating a lot of our texture on here is gonna be a noise texture. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here in our workspace, we're gonna go Shift A, I'm gonna click here on Search, and we're gonna type in Noise, and we're gonna get a noise texture. Right, and if we took this color and we plugged it into the base color of our principle, like so, we should see these kind of colorly blotches here, which is correct. Um, but we want to tell the noise texture how to distribute itself across this surface here or across the volume. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to edit and we're gonna go to preferences, go to your add-ons and then just up here in the search type in node 
and make sure you got your node wrangler enabled that's an add-on and then you're gonna once you've done that you're gonna select the noise texture and if you hit Control t or command t it's gonna automatically add in a mapping node and a texture coordinate and by default the generator should be plugged into the vector of the mapping and the vector of the mapping should be going into the vector of the noise texture which is correct so what we can do now is um, we can come over here to the scale and we're gonna make it something like 23 for now. And one of the things we really wanna bump up here is the details, looking a little bit too blotchy. So let's take the detail up to 12. So I'm gonna type in 12. And even though you don't see it really at the moment now, um, you will when we add in some more nodes. And we're gonna just take the roughness and take it up to 0.7, right? So to see this a bit better, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a color ramp node and that's gonna give us some more control with the value. So we're gonna go Shift A, search, and we're gonna type in color. Let's get a color ramp and place it on this cable over here. And now what we can do is we can take the dark value here on the bottom slider and drag it up almost to the middle, but not quite. And we're gonna take the lighter value and drag it in to about here. With the lighter value active, we're gonna click on this color bar down here. And we're gonna make the color a nice chocolatey dark kind of color. But we want it a little bit into the red. We don't want it to be unsaturated. We want some color in there. I'm gonna click on the dark value down here, the dark slider, click on the color bar, and this one, we're gonna take up into the lighter values, and we're gonna still make sure to have it somewhere in the reds, but not overly saturated, and maybe bring the value down just a little bit. So, around about there, but once it's, well, like I said, we want some red in there, but definitely don't oversaturate. So now we have that, you know, it might be the right coloring that we're looking for, but there's definitely not something right with our reflections and our bump. So let's start by adding some bump into our normal. So let's go Shift A, search, type in color and get another color ramp. This time we're gonna place it underneath the previous ramp and we're gonna take the color again of the noise texture, plug it into the factor, and we can't just plug this directly into the normal here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go Shift A, search, and I'm gonna type in bump, and we're gonna get a bump node. And now we can take the color output from this new color ramp, plug it into the height, and then take our normal output and plug it into the normal of our principal shader. And now you can see we have this nice noise texture that's being applied. And we're gonna take the strength though, and we are gonna make that lower. So let's make the 0.5, and let's come here to the slider, and we're gonna drag that black value up a little bit more, and then drag the white down, like so. So now you're gonna see it's starting to look a lot more like kind of rivery rock. And what we can do as well, this is for one more little touch, is we can just move these nodes here, grab this color ramp, and let's just go Shift D, move it above, and we're actually just gonna take the color output from that noise texture, plug it into the factor, and then take the color and plug it into the roughness of our principal shader. And now we're able to control the roughness as well. So I'm gonna drag the white value just up a little bit more. And now you can see we have the right sort of roughness happening here. So I really like the way that looks, but this is pretty good. This looks like kind of a river stone, kind of river rock you'd find. It's pretty realistic looking, but it's still not quite there. And uh, we can add some more interesting things to it. So let's go over to our modifiers now. And I'm just gonna bump the level, the viewport levels down to about three. And I'm gonna leave the render at about five. Okay, something like that. And then we're gonna go add another modifier and it's gonna be a displace. But at the moment, it's just displacing it all over the place. So we need to actually tell it what um, to use, like what grayscale values. So we're gonna go over to our textures properties down here, click on new. And we do have this object active, by the way, while we're doing that. And we're gonna come over here to the image or movie and we're gonna make it clouds. But clouds kind of looks terrible. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here to the noise basis, and we're gonna come down and make it Veroni Crackle. And we're gonna leave these pretty much as they are. For example, the type can be soft, leave the color at grayscale. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our modifier, and let's just actually bump the levels in the viewport up to about six. Okay, let's do the levels in the viewport to about six. But let's come over down to the strength, and let's make that 0.2 or 0.3. Yeah, point three should be fine, but let's go back to our texture now, and let's just come to the size here, and let's make that a bit bigger. So I'm gonna make it two, a value of two. So a value of two is definitely a lot better. So I like the look of two. And now we can go back to our modifier, and I'm just gonna bump the viewport level down to five, and then bump the render up to seven. So in, when it's rendering, it'll be rendering at a level of seven. In fact, it won't let me 
um, do it with the button. So I'm just going to manually type in 7 and that should be fine. So now we can see we have this. The strength is really up to you. Um, even something like 0.15 is still okay. Um, but really it's up to what it's really up to you, but I wouldn't go anything over 0.5. The mid level, you can leave it as it is, it's it's fine there. So now one more thing, I'm just gonna go to my world settings and I'm just gonna take the color and make it all the way down to black. I just think it makes the crevices and things look a little bit darker and it, you know, the world ambient is really dark. And uh, now it's just where you can come in here and you can mess around with some of the strength on the bump. If you wanna get a little bit more of that pitted look to the rock. If you wanna mess around with the glossiness, um, you can mess around with the value slider here. Um, since it is a river rock, it can be a little bit more dark. You can also mess around here with these color um, sliders on the gradient. Um, but once again, just keep it um, within a reasonable amount. In fact, I might take this color here and just make bring the value down just a little bit more. So just drag these sliders around until you get those nice color blotches coming through. So that's looking pretty cool. That's pretty nice looking rock. So let's quickly save. So I'm just gonna, first of all, I'm also gonna go to my object mode and just enable shade sm smooth. And then I'm gonna save this blend file. So I'm just gonna go and save it to my desktop. And then I'm gonna go render and let's just render that image and see what it looks like. Okay, so here we have it. It looks pretty good. It's kind of what we're looking for, but it's not giving us, it's looking a little bit too flat in the areas where it is smooth. So for me, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna um, get rid of this render and I'm gonna come into my node setup and I'm just gonna make sure to go back into the rendered view and I'm gonna take this, come down here to where the bump value slider is here in a color ramp and I'm gonna drag that white value up a little bit. And now you can see the roughness for the bump is distributed a little bit more evenly across the surface and I like that a lot better. So let's quickly give that a render, make sure to save it and that should be exactly where we, we want it to be. And you can already see here of the render, that's looking really good. So that's kind of the look we we're trying to achieve here. Kind of this reddish um, riverbed rock kind of look that's quite glossy, um, but also has a bit of texture and roughness to it. And uh, yeah, so that's been this tutorial. So let's just see what this looks like when it's fully rendered. And there you have it. That is our final rock render. Now for the amount of nodes that went into this, I would call it realistic, okay? but it's definitely not as realistic as some other procedural workflows you could use to make rock, but those require a lot more nodes and they are a little bit more processor intensive. So this is a really simple way of making rock. And if it's been useful, I hope you guys are able to use it and maybe give a like to this video. Feel free to check out some of my stuff on Patreon. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a good week and stay safe.